गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट टुडे इज द फर्स्ट क्लास ऑन ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर सी एस सिंह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एग्रोनॉमी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी शुड लुक अपॉन द एग्रीकल्चर सीनरियो ऑफ ऑफ इंडिया वाई बिकॉज इट इज नेसेसरी वाई शुड वी शुड प्रोसीड फॉर ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इफ यू सी द एग्रीकल्चर सीनरियो ऑफ इंडिया इट शुड भी डिवाइडेड इन टू थ्री फेजेस before 1965 that is low input and low output agriculture where we should use we are using low input and we are also getting low output but after 1965 the green revolution era came that is the period where high input and high output era we can say that this era is high input and high output era where judicious utilization of resources are done to produce high output by the farmers but after 2000 the third phase of the era is after 2000 where we see that the due to over exploitation of resources there is stagnation in food grain production sinking of operational holding declining in total factor productivity increasing cost of production low resource use efficiency and reduced farm household income high use of chemical and environmental quality is deteriorating so this after 2000 it has been uh, realized that due to ever uh, uh, the sustainability of our system is deteriorating and farmers are not getting uh, that much with use of high input that they require farming become a vital issue after 2000 because of declining productivity growth growth because the factor productivity is declining what is factor productivity it is the amount of resources that we use before uh, uh, when we compare with resources used in 1965 the same amount of fertilizer that is utilized for producing 10 kg of food grains today for production of that 10 kg of food grains we use much higher amount of nutrient that is the factor productivity is declining and due to this the profitability because the cost of production is increasing the profitability level of the farmer is decline and very narrow profit is obtained by the farmer the another concern is widespread multi nutrient deficiency we see we know the unknown criteria of essentiality where 16 essential elements are required by the plant for proper growth and development but through chemical means we are supplying only npk farmers are still not using k and they are dependent only on nitrogen and phosphorus fertilizers so the other element are uh, deficient becoming deficient in the soil and they are uh, hampering the productivity level as the living law of minimum also says that the element present in least amount regulate the growth and development of the plant this you can better understand through another law that is blackman law of limiting factor in photosynthesis blackman law of limiting factor is same as living law it is states that when carbon dioxide level in the uh, uh, ju- just at the time of sunrise the plant have enough carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere and when first sun sign came the photosynthesis starts so carbon dioxide is uh, is in high amount but sun sign regulate the photosynthetic process but in uh, afternoon the temp, uh, sun sign become high and carbon dioxide become least and regulate the photosynthesis pro- process similarly in case of nutrient the element present in least amount regulate the growth and development of the plant so we have to take care of all the nutrients for achieving higher productivity fourth issue is negative impact on soil health and soil deterioration the use of chemical fertilizers not only uh, hamper the soil health but because uh, hamper the soil health because the beneficial microflora and microfauna flora flora and fauna are demi- diminishing and due to this the various process that is occurring in the soil that is mineralization immobilization and other process are hampering so plants are totally dependent upon these chemical sources which we are applying and not upon the native fertility of the soil so the soil health is a serious concern which we should look on the fourth fifth point is contamination of ground water with pesticide and fertilizer and receding ground water table the judicious utilization of water in the green fert- uh, revolution era led to decline in the water level as we find that today we should go for 
uh, up to 200 feet level to get the water. So water level, ground water level is declining and the pesticides and chemicals which we are sp uh, spreading on the plants leached away and contaminating the ground water. Even the nitrate, uh, uh, the uh, nitrogen applied in the field are lost through volatilization and leaching losses and these leaching losses in the form of nitrate pollutes our ground uh, water level and in uh, Ludhiana and Punjab area, this nitrate water, uh, nitrate level in the water is very high, becoming very high and causing various type of diseases like methanoglobulinemia or blue baby syndrome. So uh, this is also a serious concern which, uh, 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 which the country is facing due to chemical use of fertilizers or chemical. And next point is nutritional insecurity. As you have, uh, 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 as you have gone through a court, that one apple a day keep the doctor away, because the apple contain as much uh, as a much of nutrient to uh, uh, needed by the body to get it of uh, various diseases and other things. But today, the nutritional content of all the things in the vegetables or fruit are so much declined that today we should at least eat five, five apple or six apple to get that amount of nutrient. So the nutritional insecurity prevails because the body is not getting that much of nutrient through, uh, through use of these chemical uh, produce crop. And last point is the environmental problems. The environmental problems arises due to, as I have explained, the nitrate polluting the uh, uh, atmosphere and due to volatilization losses, the methane, emission of methane and nitrous oxide is causing greenhouse gases and uh, another due to global warming and responsible for global warming and others. So these are the uh, points which uh, become make the farming as a vital issue. So is organic farming is an a alternate sol solution? The detrimental effect of green revolution led to give birth of various new concepts of farming such as organic farming, natural farming, biodynamic agriculture, do-nothing agriculture, eco-farming, etc. All these organic farming because organic farming rely on uh, or natural farming we can say that uh, rely on back to nature where uh, we have to feed the soil neither the plants because the difference between when we see the difference between chemical farming and organic farming we find that in chemical farming when we see the deficiency in plants for example when we see deficiency on older leaves that your older leaves uh, lower leaves of the plant are yellowing we say that it is due to nitrogen deficiency when the upper leaves of the plants are yellowing we say we say that it is due to sulfur deficiency when uh, 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 when we see blue color, blue blue color on on leaves that is due to phosphorus deficiency because of immobilization of carbohydrates and when we see that uh, uh, upper uh, leaves are uh, showing necrotic symptoms we say that uh, it is due to potassium deficiency so based on the farmer uh, based on the plant uh, deficiency symptoms shown by the plants we apply different type of nutrients to get uh, to correct the that def deficiency but in case of organic we should feed the soil and and soil will feed the plant that is the concept of organic farming we should not take care of the plant we should take care of the soil and soil will take care of the plant this is this this is the basic difference and in case of insect and pest management in organic farming we should take care that prevention on on the concept that prevention is better than cure and we should prevent that any type of diseases or any type of pest attack should not occur. For that we should use different type of uh, bio herbic um, um, uh, botanical herbicides, bio pesticides and uh, different crop rotation technique and, uh, 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 and different measures to prevent uh, the plant from different diseases. What is organic farming? Organic farming is a production system which avoids or largely excludes the use of synthetically compound fertilizers, pesticide, growth laboratory and livestock feed additives. So organic farming system 
rely upon the crop rotation, mechanical uh, cultivation, management of crop residue, animal manures, legume, green manure, of form waste, organic waste, and mineral, mineral bearing rocks, and aspect of biological play pest control to maintain the soil productivity for supplying plant nutrients. These, but before going to the organic farming, there are some debatable issue that can organic farming produce enough food for everybody because when a technology is given to the farmer, it should be uh, uh, economically feasible so that it can be conducted by the farmer and it should be socially acceptable and environmentally friendly so that farmer can adopt it. But no one farmer will adopt if organic farming production is less than the farm, uh, chemical farming. So it is an important uh, thing to see. Can organic farming produce enough food for everybody? Second, is, is it possible to meet the nutrient requirement of the crop entirely through organic sources? Third point is, there is are there any significant environmental benefits of organic farming? Fourth is, the, is the food produced by organic farming is superior to quality? Is fifth? Is organic farming is economically feasible? And last point, is it possible to manage pests and diseases in organic farming? These are the debatable issues because if these criteria are not met, then it is dif different, difficult for the scientist or extension worker to uh, uh, go to the farmers and try to uh, convince them for adoption. So when we see that uh, a large number of experiment has been conducted and it has been found that there is two year of conversion period in case of animal crops and in, in case of perennial crop it is three years this conversion in, during this conversion period the organic farming production is lower than the chemical farming but when we see that after two or three years of conversion period the organic farming production is much higher than that of chemical farming but it depends upon the crops, which crop you select. Because in case of rice, in case of potato, in case of leguminous crop, we get higher yield. But in case of wheat, in case of rabi maize, we are not getting as much yield that we are getting through chemical farming. So selection of crop is also an important criteria for going towards the organic farming. And it will naturally produce much more after conversion period. If the uh, nutrient are supplemented based upon the uh, nutrient requirement of the crop. As a scientist, Pinman et al. says that an acre of living topsoil contains about 900 pounds of earthworm and 200, 2400 pounds of fungi, 1500 pounds of bacteria, 133 pounds of protozoa, 890 pounds of arthropods and algae, and small mammals in some cases. So, a living top soil will contain approximately that much amount of microorganisms which are beneficial to our ecosystem. So a large number of techniques depend on number of organic farming techniques have been developed such as biodynamic farming given by Rodolf Steiner, natural farming by Subhas Palikar, Nutko farming by Dabholkar, Panjigavya farming by Natarajan, Rishi Krishi by Des Pandey, Homa Farming by Sri Vasant Prajpe and Javi Krishi which is the integration of different technique to address the issue. But when we see upon these different uh, technique of uh, uh, technique we find that the cow dung and cow urine are the basic components which are utilized by all of these uh, in all of these technique and in the, uh, importance is given to the indigenous cow because our indigenous cow possess hump and horns which are the powerful receptor of the cosmic energy. They can absorb the cosmic energy and they also possess the Suri Ketu Nadi which are uh, written as, as in written in Puran, our Puran that they are connected to the suns hence their milk get, get yellow tinge. So, these inter, uh, indigenous cow have every product of cow like milk, dung, ghee, urine, all are ben beneficial to the humanity. In addition, the cow urine uh, possesses 8.91 m aura energy and which are 
can cure many diseases. What is this aura energy? Every individual has some aura energy and it is maybe positive or negative depending upon the uh, uh, response of uh, an individual and in case of indigenous cow it is very high. Uh, you have uh, learned that in case of Mahatma Buddha, Mahatma Buddha has very high aura energy so he has converted uh, 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 the angli ball in uh, seconds because he, the power of our, our energy is very high in Mahatma Buddha as in case of Vivekananda the power of uh, our energy is very high in uh, so he uh, by uh, simply spacing, uh, is speaking my dear brother and sisters of America a clap of about five minutes uh, goes uh, in the hall so uh, this is the power of our energy so in case of uh, cow, the aura energy power is also very high. We also go to the uh, simply go to, go to the temple to receive the positive aura energy, and so the, our body is uh, a better uh, receptor of uh, get to receive the power, power of aura energy, positive aura energy. So we can do all the things positively and get. Uh, uh, forward in an, uh, in life with positive attitude so all these things depend upon the aura energy and in, in indigenous cow the power of aura energy is very high it also contains sulfur nitrogen phosphorus iron sodium, uh, sodium potassium copper manganese carbolic acid and 24 type of salts it also contains 95 percent water 2.5 percent urea 2.5 percent minerals hormones enzyme amino acid cytokinin etc so it is a good source of fertilizer that can be utilized by the farmer cow urine also possess the property of antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral and is still non-toxic in habit. It has medicinal and disinfectant properties so that, uh, that is util uh, utilized by the uh, uh, people using uh, in village you have find out that uh, they are using the cow dung and cow urine uh, mixture for uh, pasting the wall and other uh, because they, they, they possess the disinfectant property they serve as an effective insecticide and keep the uh, keeping the plant evergreen cow dung is rich source of beneficial microorganism and we find that uh, uh, the nutrient content and the beneficial microorganism population is very high in case of our indigenous cow as when we compared with jersey the other cow this uh, cow dung and cow urine are utilized for the preparation of different bioenhancers. These are the organic preparation prepared by fermenting cow dung and cow urine. And besides cow dung and cow urine, some other products like milk, ghee, curd, pulse flour, virgin soil, where cultivation does not take place. And so that soil is called virgin soil. In case of forest soil or uh, the burnt soil has been taken as the virgin soil and herbal leaves are incorporated uh, in these organic preparation and they are placed in a suitable container for fermentation over a specific days. Normally three days are taken for uh, fermentation and a regular stirring is done in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction so that uh, after three days the pop microbial population in these bioenergies get tremendously enhanced and this can be utilized for next seven days and after 10 days uh, the population of these microorganisms will go on declining so we should apply in within one week after third days so to get maximum response of these bio enhancer and different to this different type of bioenhancers like Amrit Pani, Vijamrit, Jivamrit, Panjigavya, Kau Pitpath, Biocells are prepared. They are used to improve soil fertility, seed and seedling treatment and encouraging plant vigor and pest management. They are rich source of microbial concertia and plant nutrients. As we can see the chemical analysis of uh, uh, US Dharwad the, in case of Panjigavya, Bija Amrit, Jiva Amrit, Biodigester Slurry, the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium content or the micronutrient content, zinc, copper, iron, manganese has been found tremendously high. And the microbial uh, population like bacteria, fungi, actinomycete, phosphate solubilizing microorganism and free living nitrogen fixers are also been very high. So they uh, uh, the microbial population when get enhanced in our soil, the mineralization rate, 
will uh, go on higher mineralization rate go on higher and the available nutrient content of the soil because nutrients are present in soil in fixed form when the mineralization process uh, become higher they become in available form and available to the plant and plant uh, will become uh, more responsive to these nutrients first we should talk about the zero budget natural farming the zero budget natural farming was given by padam sri sri subhash palkar it rely on four principles that use of ghan jivamrit, bijamrit and jivamrit and second principle is use of intercrops especially pulses in the uh, as intercrop in the entire species and third use of weeds or crop residue as mulch and fourth is wapsa condition so these are the four principles on which zero budget natural farming based the wapsa condition we know that uh, plant growth is better when 50% is soil, 25% is water and 25% is air. But we are, we are not utilizing that principle. So in case of zero budget natural farming, if we are sown crops on a bund, uh, in a bund, then we should apply uh, water in one furrow and skipping uh, in one uh, furrow and skipping the other furrow so that what air from other side get the 25% air from plant will get 25 air 25% air from other side and 25% water from uh, other uh, uh, from that where irrigation water is applied so their maximum growth take place so this principle is utilized as wapsa condition uh, technique for preparation of uh, bijamrit Cow dung is used 5 kg, cow urine 5 liter, virgin soil is used 50 grams, cow milk 1 liter which is optional, it can be taken or not, uh, slag lime 50 gram and water 200 liter. All these mixture, all these things are uh, uh, taken in a earthen container or plastic uh, container and uh, mixed. Uh, mixed well and regular stirring is done for three days in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction and after that they can be used for the treatment of the seeds before sowing because it is effective for seed and soil borne diseases and protect the seed and vegetative from pathogen infections and it also improve the germination and give better plant stand and promotes early seedling growth. The Jivamrit is prepared by using 10 kg of cow dung, 5 to 10 liters of cow urine, jaggery that is good in 2 kg and 2, 4 liters of sugar cane juice, virgin soil is 1 kg, pulse flour 2 kg and water 200 liters. All these ingredients are similarly uh, as in case of bijamrit are mixed in a plastic or earthen container and stirring is done for 3 days. After that they are uh, they are used in the standing crop and 200 liter of this Jiva Amrit are sufficient to one irrigate one acre of land. Normally three to five times uh, use of uh, uh, this Jiva Amrit are done in a month and in fruit plant Jiva Amrit can be placed in ring where feeder roots are concentrated uh, and uh, this are applied when uh, there is uh, uh, when this uh, this is applied the sufficient moisture level in the field is necessary so uh, it should be applied with irrigation water or uh, after uh, rainfall when sufficient water in the field they should be uh, sprayed uh, on the soil so to get maximum response but in case where the organic matter content is low in case of zero budget na natural farming use of ghanjiva amrit as uh, before sowing of the crop is recommended. So Ghanjiva Amrit is also be applied because th uh, they can support the organic matter content of the uh, Ghanjiva Amrit, support the microbial population applied through Jiva Amrit or uh, Jiva, uh, Jiva Amrit uh, because these microorganisms depend for their energy source on organic matter content. So organic matter content is necessary so to maintain the organic matter content, application of Ghanjivamrit is necessary. Rishi Kishi was developed by Des Pandey. In this, at the start, 15 kg of virgin rhizophere soil of banyan tree is broadcasted over one acre of land and enriched with 200 liter of Amrit Pani. 
Amrit Pani is a special bioenhancer prepared by mixing 250 gram of ghee into 10 kg of cow dung followed by 500 gram honey and diluted with 200 liter of water. This formation is used for seed treatment that is called bee sanskar or enrichment of soil that we say bhumi sanskar and foliar spray on plant as padap sanskar. For soil treatment it is need to apply it through irrigation water as fertigation or fertigation coupled with mulching. Panchigavya Krishi given by Dr. Natarajan it is use of five products of cow that is cow dung, cow urine, cow milk, cow curd, cow curd and cow ghee. They, these five products are, are utilized for the preparation of Panchigavya and sugar cane juice, toddy and ripe banana is, uh, is also used to, uh, to enhance the fermentation process in Panchgavya. This Panchgavya is used for seed or seedling treatment or plant part treatment. It is mixed with irrigation water at the rate of 500 liter per hectare and then it should be applied to the field. The cost of Panchgavya comes about 25 rupees 25 to 35 per liter. Nutco farming. It is uh, another components which uh, which is utilized in natural farming. Uh, Nutco farming has two major component: Amrit Jal and Amrit Mitti. In Amrit Jal, one kg of cow dung is mixed with one liter of cow urine and 50 gram of jaggery and 10 liter of water and is tired the mixture thrice in a day, 12 times in clockwise and 12 per times in anti-clockwise direction. And on fourth day, it should be mixed with 100 liter of water and applied at the rate of 1 liter per square foot per, per plant at 15, 30, 90 and 180 days after sowing. In Amrit Mitti is prepared in three steps. First is heap making. Heap making is done by taking 100 kg of chopped biomass. The chopped biomass which is taken of C4 plants should be more preferred such as maize and sugarcane. These uh, their leaves uh, are preferred for 24 hours in Amrit Jal. They are soaked in 24 hours for in Amrit Jal and prepare a heap in area of 10 feet and height of 1 feet. Then seed sowing. Seeds, six type of seed according to six rasa, which we say six ras means uh, pungent, sweet, sour and different. There are six type of taste as our sensory organ. Uh, test organ uh, identify these six rasas or six type of seeds are used uh, for uh, cultivation in this heap and uh, uh, for sowing in the heap and after that the pruning and heap turning the biomass when the, uh, of this six uh, rasa seed when they grow up then they are pruned at 21st, 42 and 63 day, days after sowing by cutting 25%, 25% and 95% of the biomass respectively and leave the residue on the heap for drying. Turn the heap, continue turning once in a week for a month. The Amrit Mitti will be ready to for use after 140 to 150 days since the start of the process. Next is biodynamic agriculture. The biodynamic agriculture was given by Rodolf Steiner. It is based upon the astronomical preparation and different BD preparation. The, uh, in this, the farming is governed by the ascending and descending uh, period of the moon. The ascending period, uh, when the size of the moon increases, then we say that earth breathes out. In this period, the cosmic forces uh, works above the rhizosphere and promote the growth of above ground parts. This period is suitable for foliar application, propagation activities, sowing and harvesting. And uh, in the next 15 days, when the descending uh, period of the moon uh, comes, then the size of the moon decreases and that period is called the earth breathes in. When the uh, earth breathes in, in this period the cosmic forces works below the rhizosphere and it is suitable for the growth of underground part. So this period is suitable for land preparation, manure application and harvesting of root crops. So in this cosmic calendar should be utilized for 
cultivation of crops and different type of biodynamic preparation like BD500, BD501, BD502, BD503, BD504, BD505, BD506, BD507 and BD508 are also used. The cow pit path and another uh, thing which is also utilized in this process uh, in biodynamic agriculture. Next is uh, Agnihotra or Homa farming. In this, uh, a, a copper pyramid is uh, is taken. On the on that, uh, this is a, we take the uh, dung of cow uh, uh, cow ghee and uh, uh, the achat uh, the unbroken uh, rice uh, unbroken rice is taken uh, as used as achat. This are taken and uh, uh, we, when we see on internet this time of sunrise and sunset of a particular area it comes in and that time is uh, the process of Agnihotra should be done and uh, with the month the Surya Swaha Surya Idam Namam Prajapate Swaha Prajapate Idam Namam and at the evening Agne Swaha Agne Idam Namam and Prajapate Swaha Prajapate Idam Namam so this Ch uh, chatting of these mantra are done at the specific time when at sunrise and sunset the same thing uh, the Bihar and uh, Jharkhand people knows that they are uh, uh, the, the chat importance of the festival chat where uh, the sunrise at the time of sunrise the sun has the maximum power so at the, in chat also we give uh, uh, tribute to the uh, uh, sun at the time of sunrise so in case of Agnihotra the similar things we also do that by uh, chatting of this mantra the thing is done so this Agnihotra can uh, uh, create a beneficial atmosphere up to 12 kilometer height and about 150 kilometer area in the in, uh, in, uh, in distance uh, uh, through resonance effect and uh, these are benef not only uh, uh, beneficial for the crop plant but also to the human being and uh, the ashes obtained after Agnihotra should also be utilized and it has been found that they improve the water quality or the soil quality very much. Thank you. All of that. In the next class we should deal about the manures and uh, concentrated uh, organic manure and bulky organic manure and different green manuring and biofertilizer all that okay thank you